Okay, well, welcome back. Um, so now we're going to enter into the part about where we talk about divine healing, and particularly is healing in the atonement. This is one of the the biggest first thing we ha foundation we have to lay is to be thoroughly convinced that healing is ours, because if we don't firmly establish that, then there will always be that doubt that God will heal you or that you can be healed. <coughs> so it's very important. So if you have your Bibles, turn open to Psalm 103, verse 2 and 3. And we're going to look about is healing in the atonement. Now, the, the word atonement is just a word that means all the things that Jesus purchased for us at Calvary. So forgiveness of sins and healing. Um, so Psalm 103, verse 2 and 3 it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. So how many sins are forgiven through the cross? All. How many diseases are healed? All. Okay, all your diseases. Now, um, there's, an old, there's a connection in the Old Testament between uh, God paying the price for sin and God paying the price for healing. It's all through the scripture, and we're going to show you, starting in the Old Testament and going to the New Testament. You know, power from God to overcome sin is the same power that helps us get healed. It's the same power, and they both were purchased for us at Calvary. Uh, so let's repeat that again. Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Now, maybe you've been taught that it's not God's will to heal, or that maybe God is trying to teach you something through this sickness, or maybe it's for God's glory, or maybe it's not God's timing. But if we were to apply the word sickness, uh, sin, where we say the word sickness, it would, it would sound altogether different. So let's look at these as if we replaced the word sin with sickness. Maybe it's not God's will to forgive you. Mm -mm. Perhaps this sin is for the glory of God. No. Maybe God is using this sin to teach you something. No, no takers. <laughs> How about this one? Be patient in your sin until it's God's will to forgive you. No, so see how silly, see how silly that is, because we are firmly convinced that our sin is forgiven at the cross, that Jesus purchased that for us, but what we are not fully convinced of is that our, our diseases, our sicknesses were also paid for at the same time, and so we have to firmly establish that. I believe sometimes we use these things because we're we don't see people healed a lot, and so th this helps us explain our inadequacies in seeing people healed. But I think a better thing to do would be let's teach how healing is ours and get that in us, and then we'll see more. So now, again, we'd never do that in the area of forgiveness because we're firmly convinced. It's only a sickness that we pull this. Um, so here's another scripture in Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 5. It says, surely he has borne our griefs. Now that word in the Hebrew is the word koli, and it means malady, disease, or sickness. So he has, surely he has borne our griefs is really the word sickness. And carried our sorrows. Again, this word in the Hebrew, the word for grief, is grief, pains, and sorrow. So it could be pains as well. Yet we esteemed him stricken by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. So again, this is an Old Testament prophecy showing what Jesus was going to do for us on the cross regarding sin and sickness. Um, so there, in this passage, there are four things that are taken from us. Our griefs or sickness, our sorrows or pains, our transgressions, and our iniquities. And there are two things given to us. What are they? Peace and healing. So at the cross, J Jesus took four things away from us and gave us two, peace and healing. And um, again, 
healing and forgiveness so connected, so tied. We're going to show that over and over in the scripture. So now in the New Testament, we're in, the, in Matthew 8, verse 16 and 17. Uh, it says, When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, the one we just got through reading, saying he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. So again, if we, if we ever had doubt that those words were sicknesses and pain, here in the New Testament, they're saying infir infirmities and sicknesses. He himself bore our infirmities and sicknesses. Where did he bear them? On the cross at Calvary through his stripes. So the suffering of Jesus was to purchase our salvation and our healing. And, you know, it's God's desire to heal. It's always been his desire to heal. It, he is the Lord, our healer. I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals you. That's his character and nature. That's who he is. He gave himself that name. So it's, it's always been his will to heal. But now we have legal grounds. Now we have the right to it. Now it's, it's ours for the taking if we believe. And we've got to firmly get this in our minds so that, you know, when the time comes that we need that, we'll have it in us. You can't wait till you're sick to try to figure out if, God's, if it's God's will to heal you. Um, God's revealed his will to heal you just like he's revealed his will to save you. There's no difference between them. Um, and again, that same Greek word sozo is used interchangeably for salvation and healing. Now let's look at another New Testament verse, 1 Peter 2, 24. And um, it says, Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. So again, we're saying by the stripes of Jesus, when he bore them at Calvary, um, before when we read the scriptures, it says, by his stripes you are healed. Now here in 1 Peter, notice the tense. It says, by whose stripes you were healed. When were you healed? At Calvary, 2,000 years ago. So you were healed 2,000 years ago. Now, I heard some preachers on the radio saying that any time they hear somebody say, I know God is going to heal me, <laughs> that they just knew that that person wasn't ready to get <laughs> healed yet because they still felt like God was going to do something. No, he already did something 2,000 years ago. Um, so if you're, it's already in the spirit realm waiting for you to believe it and receive it. As long as you're waiting on God to do something, then you're being inactive and passive instead of being active in your faith to bring that into reality today because it's already been done. Okay? Faith appropriates what God has already done. Faith isn't believing God can do something or that he will do something, faith is believing God has already done it. You have faith that God saved you, don't you? <laughs> so have faith that he has already purchased your healing. You know, it's impossible to have faith if you don't know God's will. And um, so, again, if we can see that God's already purchased it, it's got to be his will, or he wouldn't have done it. As long as there's any doubt then there's double-mindedness, and, and we won't receive healing. So we've got to be firmly established in this. That's why I'm harping on it so much. We've got to get this in us. You know, Jesus, when he died on the cross, he triumphed over Satan, over everything that the devil has ever tried to do or will try to do to us, whether it's attack us with sickness, you know, um, attack us with, uh, you know, sin, uh, cause us to, be, to sin, different things, everything he tries to put on us, bondage to everything. Jesus took care of it, and he took care of our healing as well. But, you know, it, um, the benefits of the atonement aren't automatic. You don't, just because Jesus paid for your sins on the cross doesn't mean that your sins are forgiven unless you believe and receive it, right? So the same way with sickness. It's not automatic. You have to believe and receive it. You have to apply it. You have to appropriate it, just like you have to appropriate what he did for you for your sins. Um, apply it. Um, you know, God's will is not automatic. We oftentimes you hear the word, well, if it's God's will to heal me, I'll get healed. But God's will is not automatic. Second Peter 3, 9 tells us that it's not God's will that any should perish. But we know people are perishing every day. But it's not his will that they perish, but they're perishing. 
because people don't accept what he did. So uh, it's not automatic. It, it, can, if you ever say, well, if it's God's will to heal me, I'll get healed. No, you won't because you have to appropriate it. It is his will to heal you. We already know that. Um, okay, let's look at a couple other scriptures that bear this out. In James chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, he's talking here to the church. He says, is any among you sick? Here's, here's what you do if any is among you sick. What do we need to do if we're sick? Right here it tells us. Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So James makes it clear, you know, when he asks the church, if anyone's sick among you, what do you do? Um, that word uh, uh, sick is the word asthen asthenio, means to be feeble, to be diseased, impotent, to be sick, to be weak. So, you know, he goes on to say, that obviously there are people in the church that are like this, and here's what you do. The prayer of faith will save the sick. Um, so is healing in the atonement? Well, isn't everything we get from God in the atonement? I mean, literally everything you need was purchased on the cross. There's nothing else that you can get aside from that. So if, is it in the atonement? Yes, by all means, everything we get from God is. Without his work on the cross, we have no basis for healing, no basis for forgiveness of sins. Uh, you know, it's, but it's he's signed, sealed, and delivered it to us. It's ours. And um, now... Here's another interesting thing. I want you to see how healing is in all three of the Godhead, the, the Trinity. We have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're going to show you how all three of these people <laughs> um, are healers. So let's look at the Father first. It says in Exodus 15, 26, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God, this is God speaking, to do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. This is where God gave himself the name, Jehovah Rapha, I am the Lord who heals you. So he was revealing who he was through his name. His nature and character is to heal you. That's his name. It's who he is. Just like God is love, God is our healer. Same thing. And he said, I am the Lord, I change not. Now, um, if we want to know what God's will is uh, regarding anything, who would we look? Who would we look to? Jesus, because Jesus is the perfect will of God manifested. Jesus only did what God told him to do. He is the express will of God. In Hebrews ten seven, um, it says, you know, that Jesus came to do the will of Him who sent Him. So Jesus healed all who came to Him. He never refused healing to anyone. And if he is the express image of God's will, then he healed more people than anybody, right? The, 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 yeah, the, you know, the Bible tells us that um, if all of the miracles that Jesus did were to be written down, the world could not contain the books. So Jesus healed more people than anybody, and he's the express will of God, right? So healing is who he is as well. In Acts 10.38, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. So who, who um, where does sickness come from? <laughs> the devil, healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And then his death on the cross, he purchased our healing throughout the ages to come. Um, so when Jesus is clearly showing the Father's will to heal, he said in John 6:38, For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Now, Bill Johnson, many of y'all know him. He's, he's a guy that teaches on healing a lot and has, sees, sees a lot of healings. He says Jesus is perfect theology. So if we want to know the will of God, let's look at Jesus. He is the will of God. Anything you think you know about God, if you can't find it in the person of Jesus, then you need to question what you are believing because he only did what he saw the Father do. And if Jesus 
did it and said, said it and told us to do it, then again, it's got to be his, God's will to do it. If the will of God was for us to be sick, then no one disregarded that more than Jesus because he healed everybody who came to him. You know, the Bible says it's the devil who comes to steal, kill, and destroy us. But Jesus came that we could have life. That's in John 10.10. 10. You know, it's, it's, it's such a huge shame that Jesus would suffer what he did on Calvary and us not benefit from it, not use that. It would be kind of like, let's just say you found this tribe in Africa and they were dying of starvation and thirst. I mean, they had no food and no water. And you decided you wanted to save <coughs> these people. So you sell everything you have. You sell out. You sell everything so that you can buy them food and buy the, dig them wells and you can save these people, right? So you buy the food. You sell everything. You buy the food. You take it to them. And then they keep on being hungry and sick because they won't eat your food or, or drink the water you provided for them. It's kind of like what we do with Jesus when we don't accept what he already purchased for us. You know, you think about all the sacrifice you made <laughs> for that, and Jesus made, what kind of sacrifice did he make? Oh, my gosh. Um, the ultimate sacrifice for us to have healing, and yet we don't, we, don't, we don't believe it, and we don't act on it and don't use it. We pray for the sick so Jesus gets what he paid for. So... Um, Let's see. We've got a little bit of time. Okay. So not only does scripture teach us that healing is in the atonement, not only do we see that it's, um, it's in the Father, it's in the Son, it's also in the Holy Spirit. Um, the gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12 clearly show us that the Holy Spirit is involved in healing. Okay. So that's all three persons of the Trinity we covered. And now let's look at what they tell us to do. In Matthew 10, 1, he gave the disciples a double commission of preaching together with healing and casting out demons. It says, and when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. And in verses 7 and 8, it says, and as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, Freely you have received, freely give. So here, Jesus is giving the disciples a command to heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead. And then, um, you know, we, we don't think, it's like the first half, preach the gospel, we believe that. <laughs> we believe in preaching the gospel, we just don't get the rest of the, of the verse. And, you know, even in the Great Commission, Jesus tells everybody, the whole body of believers, he gives us authority to, to heal the sick. So we have God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We have Jesus telling us to do it. Is there anybody left? You know, I mean, is there anything that we can add to that? Um, you know, who would still say God doesn't want healing to take place, right? Anybody? So is it for today? Well, is salvation for today? Is preaching the gospel for today? then healing the sick is for today. Is the Holy Spirit still around? <laughs> then he's still, he's still in, the, in the business. If we look at Acts 2, 38 and 39, it said, Then Peter said to him, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. This includes us today. We're the ones afar off. Um, so sometimes we think, well, that was for the apostles. That was for that day and age. But it, no, it's for all who are afar off. That includes us. You know, and in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus said at the end, he said, you know, on earth as it is in heaven, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, is there sickness in heaven? No. So when we pray, we're praying on earth as it is in heaven. So there's no sickness in heaven. So let's get rid of sickness here. So, healing is for all and available to all through grace and belief in God, right? Amen. All right, is there any questions? 
I meant to ask that earlier and forgot. Does anybody have any questions or anybody want to add or anybody want to say something? I just thoroughly convinced all of y'all, did I? <laughs> Amen. I think, I think most of y'all are already convinced. I feel like I'm preaching to the choir here. So if there aren't any questions, does anybody have anything they want to say? Or any, just did anything come to your mind as I was talking that you want to share? I think the one that made it wrong was the uh, one that Bob mentioned was that he was talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. He was talking about the Hebrew prophets and the Old Testament and stuff. Uh -huh. And he said that he said that he was referring yep. to them. Yep. I think it's a little bit wrong. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, it's already done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. It is finished, yes. Yes, they said, uh, they, uh, he said how Jesus said at the cross, it is finished. It's already done. It's already finished. I have to say it for the microphone so we can get on there. So, Yes, that's very good. Thank you. That's good. I need to add that to my notes. <laughs> That's good. All right. Well, I, I would say that we'll have the healing team come up. And um, if anybody wants prayer, you know, it's yours. Come get it. So healing team, come on up. And if you've got prayer for anything you need prayer for, come up and let these guys pray for you. They are amazing people of God.